Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. The truth doesn't respect consensus opinion. It exists outside of everyone's goals and desires. It doesn't change or cease to be, even when faced with passionately willful ignorance. It doesn't bend to the wishes and opinions of experts, no matter how well qualified they are or how much they're supposed to know about a given subject. The truth about something just is what it is. And sometimes it's confusing and counterintuitive. Sometimes it can even seem disappointing or somehow just wrong at first. But the truth is always worth going after because it's where the most beauty in the universe lies. Sometimes that battle for the claim to the truth can get very nasty. In the early 1990s, there was a vicious battle going on between some of the top minds in the world about a game show, if you can believe it. Let's make a deal. On one side of the argument were hundreds of some of the best mathematicians around, experts in statistics, scientists, engineers. They were the right people to ask about this particular let's make a deal math problem. They were the proper experts and specialists, and they all quickly agreed on what they considered to be the very obvious right answer. And on the other side, with the alternative argument, really the only one to see things differently. Just a single person, one woman, not a math professor or particle physicist, not an engineer or computer scientist, a columnist for Parade Magazine, one woman, Marilyn Voss Savant. Great name. All the drama started in 1990 when a letter with a question arrived from Craig F. Whitaker, one of the readers of Voss Savant's column, Ask Marilyn. Here is the question posed by the reader. Suppose you're on a game show and you're given the choice of three doors. Behind one door is a car. Behind the other doors, goats. You pick a door, say number one, and the host, who knows what's behind all the doors, opens another door, say number three, which has a goat. He says to you, do you want to pick door number two? Is it to your advantage to switch your choice of doors? So does it make sense to switch your choice from door number one to door number two? I'll let that sink in for a minute and we'll consider it again because there is something interesting in this little word problem. I promise I'll give you the answer. And my bet is that some people aren't going to like it. Some may even, and this thought really frightens me, hit unsubscribe. I also promise to show you exactly why the right answer is the right answer. So who is Marilyn Voss Savant? And why was she right when everyone else had it wrong? Marilyn Voss Savant was born Marilyn Mock, also a great name, on August 11th, 1946, in St. Louis, Missouri, to parents Joseph Mock and Marina Voss Savant. Savant has indicated one should keep premarital surnames, with sons taking their fathers and daughters their mothers. As a teenager, Savant worked in her father's general store and wrote for local newspapers using pseudonyms. She went to Merrimack Community College and studied philosophy at Washington University in St. Louis, but quit two years later to help with the family investment business. She moved to New York City in the 1980s to pursue a career in writing. Prior to starting Ask Marilyn, she wrote the Omni IQ Quiz Contest for Omni Magazine, which included intelligence quotients, IQ quizzes, articles on intelligence, and how it's evaluated. Marilyn Vossavant ended up taking the test herself to find out that she was in the big leagues in terms of IQ. She was named in the Guinness Book of World Records as the person possessing the highest IQ, with a reported score of 228. Despite her status as the world's smartest woman, Vasavant has maintained that attempts to measure intelligence are essentially useless and she rejects IQ tests as unreliable. And this is how she caught her big break. When Parade Magazine wrote a profile on her performance on the IQ test, readers responded with so many letters that the publication offered her a full-time job. Shortly after that, she established Ask Marilyn, a now famous weekly column in which she answers and, and continues to answer to this day a variety of science and reasoning questions, as well as logic puzzles. It was her solution to a now famous question posed by one of her readers to her column that ignited one of the most heated intellectual battles in years. 
So back to the controversial, let's make a deal, or how it's sometimes referred to, the Monty Hall problem. Here it is again. Suppose you're on a game show, and you're given the choice of three doors. Behind one door is a car, behind the other two, goats. You pick a door, say number one, and the host, who knows what's behind all the doors, opens another door, say door number three, which has a goat. He says to you, do you want to pick door number two? Is it to your advantage to switch your choice of doors? So does it make sense to switch your choice from door number one to door number two? Yes, it absolutely makes sense. You should always change your choice under these conditions. You double your chances of winning the car that way. This is what Marilyn Vassavant answered in her column in the follow-up to the reader's question. Even though, and I promised the Vanadium audience, her answer was correct, and I didn't forget my vow to show you how and why, she received over 10,000 letters, many from noted scholars and PhDs, informing her that she was a real dummy. Some were even pretty mean about it. The outcry was so intense that Marilyn Vassavant was forced to devote three subsequent columns to explaining why she was correct. Even in the wake of her well-stated and clear responses, the Vassavant hating continued. I still think you're wrong, wrote one man almost a year later. There is such a thing as female logic, the man went on. These people should have at least thought about it a minute longer before attacking her. One guy, Scott Smith, PhD from the University of Florida, wrote in, you blew it and you blew it big. That's what he said, as an exclamation point. Since you seem to have difficulty grasping the basic principles at work here, I'll explain. After the host reveals a goat, you now have a one in two chance of being correct. Whether you change your selection or not, the odds are the same. There is enough mathematical illiteracy in this country, and we don't need the world's highest IQ propagating more. Shame! Wow, Scott Smith. So arrogant. And using the word shame with an exclamation point, no less. What a jerk. Here's another humdinger from a patronizing jackass called Charles Reed. Oh, excuse me, Dr. Charles Reed, PhD of the University of Florida. He wrote, may I suggest that you obtain and refer to a standard textbook on probability before you try to answer a question of this type again? Listen to this guy. These people are insufferable. Here's another one. I am sure you will receive many letters on this topic from high school and college students. Perhaps you should keep a few addresses for help with future columns, wrote W. Robert Smith, PhD of Georgia State University. And E. Ray Bobo, PhD of Georgetown University, wrote in saying, you are utterly incorrect about the game show question. And I hope this controversy will call some public attention to the serious national crisis in mathematical education. If you can admit your error, you will have contributed constructively toward the solution of a deplorable situation. How many irate mathematicians are needed to get you to change your mind? Wow. Keep in mind he was wrong big time. The last couple of quotes I'll share reveal quite a lot, I think. Not so much about math, but more about people. So Everett Harmon, PhD, of the U.S. Army Research Institute, responded to the column, you made a mistake, but look at the positive side. If all these PhDs were wrong, the country would be in some very serious trouble. The final quote I'll share is short, but oh so special. It's from Don Edwards of Oregon, saying to Vassavant, maybe women look at math problems differently than men. Hmm. So, Here's why Marilyn Vassavant was right, and all these other passionate experts were wrong. Since the two doors, one containing a car and the other a goat, remain after the host opens door number three, most would assume that the probability of selecting the car is one out of two, or one half. This may seem right, but there's something subtle, there's something deeper. When the contestant makes the initial choice, the odds are one out of three they selected the door with the car behind it. That makes sense. That leaves the remaining two out of three share of probability left with the other two doors. When the host opens one of those two doors to reveal the goat, 
the probability doesn't change from two out of three. It stays that way. But now, one of those doors is a known quantity. But the total share of the probability distribution is the same, two out of three. If you switch your choice, your chances of winning the car actually double from one out of three to two out of three. The winning odds of one third on the first choice can't go up to one half just because the host opens a losing door, wrote Vassavant. Indeed, if you map out six games exploring all possible outcomes, it becomes clear that switching doors result in winning two thirds or 66.6% .6 of the time and keeping your original door choice results in winning only one third, roughly 33% of the time. Computer models were even coded that corroborated her logic and support for her, her understanding of the problem started to grow. Eventually, many of those who've written in to correct Marilyn Vassavant's math changed their minds and seeded that they had been in error. In the beginning, only 8% of readers believed her logic to be true. This number rose to 56% in roughly two years. And among academics, 35% of initial support rose to 71. Among the new believers was Robert Sachs, a math professor at George Mason University, who originally written a nasty letter to Vassavant, telling her that she blew it and offering his help to explain. After realizing that he was in fact incorrect, he felt compelled to send her another letter, this time repenting for his self-righteousness. He wrote, after removing my foot from my mouth, I'm now eating humble pie. I vowed as penance to answer all the people who wrote to castigate me. It's been an intense professional embarrassment. Good. Sometimes a little embarrassment is good for professional and personal growth. The truth can sometimes hurt, especially when it's not what you'd expect, when it might threaten the credibility of experts and challenge the status quo. Nothing turns the world upside down quite like the truth. Sometimes the smartest and most qualified people are the easiest to fool. Qualifications and degrees are not deeds to the truth about the world. Remember that the next time experts are trying to make you feel stupid or question yourself. How much do they really know? Have they been fooled? Who is the right person to trust? I say, yourself. Thank you very much. This is Chris Rankin with Vanadium.